is asked to comment on the following statement. To sell one's soul to Satan means to live as everybody lives. To give one's physical body, mind, mood, happiness and time to masses, to the crowd. The question is, is the spiritual growth and coming closer to the forces of light always connected to self-awareness and individual consciousness? Well, the short answer to that is no. Um, first of all, um, we have to see that we are indeed living in different, co different cosmoses, which can be satanic, which can be luciferic, or which can be aramanic in nature, or divine, if it is possible. And indeed, in the satanic cosmos, it is about connection. It is about um, uh, becoming one. It is a very mystical cosmos. And uh, if you indeed compare it, you could say like, okay, we are going on uh, out of the satanic cosmos into the luciferical cosmos. This is the current motion of the culture in the world, which is indeed a, a cosmos where there is much more individuality. The uh, collective consciousness is shattered, is lost, and we become unaware of others, we become uncaring towards others, and we care only for ourselves. And to most people this is considered progress, but if you look at it from a perspective of how high the vibration is, or how harmonic the vibration is, we're actually moving backwards in the world, not moving forwards. So if you would look at like these uh, primitive Stone Age people who very much have a collective consciousness and live in tribes, um, on an energetic level they were more skilled and more advanced than modern man. So it is in that sense not better to be very self-conscious or self-aware. Um, one of the ideas is that it is a cycle, and I personally actually agree to that. That things are in a way moving up and down, and society itself is moving up and down in cycles, where it goes from being a very uh, God-centered or cosmically aware society, uh, which is the highest level of vibration, to a satanic society where people are very much focused on being together, on being part of the cosmos. The relationship is not as clear with the higher powers because it becomes overshadowed by our own thoughts, our emotions, the social pressures, um, yeah, our love for the beings around us. And then it moves into um, yeah, the current state, which is very uh, luciferic, where it, be it becomes very much about like me, personal development, what I want, what I need, my personal path, my personal relationship with the divine, uh, my personal importance, and ultimately to the Arimanic, where uh, the personality uh, is no longer flexible, but it becomes rigid. So this is my job, this is my station, this is my function. And that is your job, and that is your station, and that's your function. So it ultimately turns into bureaucracy, you could say, on a spiritual level, where higher powers control lower powers, and lower powers have to be higher powers. So the freedom which exists within the higher worlds also disappears. And this is a natural process of these cosmos, these four cosmoses are constantly influencing us. Sometimes one wins out, then the other. So society is in a constant flux between these powers. But these powers in themselves have nothing to do with light or dark. And they are just methods of organization for our world and methods of spiritual advancement. So, yes, it would mean that if you surrender to the satanic impulse, you indeed become aware of the masses. But here it is implied in the statement that by being aware of the masses, you also become very passive and that you become like a sheep in a flock. And this is the dark side of the satanic cosmos. 
that people become very lazy. They're like, okay, uh, I will just do what the government tells me. I will be like a good sheep, never be first, never be last, never volunteer. And then you'll be safe within the herd. And of course, if you live like this, there's very little spiritual advancement. But it's also very possible to be like the shepherd, to be like the priest, like uh, Jesus, to say, gosh, I feel love for the people around me. I feel connected to the people around me. I care for them. So I have certain powers, certain talents, certain capabilities. They have certain needs, certain desires, certain wants. So how can I improve humanity? And the focus is not so much on improving yourself, but by sacrificing yourself, helping hundreds, thousands of people. And this way, you're in a way investing your own life into the development of the entire race, of the entirety of humanity. This is the light side of the satanic cosmos. And if you yeah, don't go into that deep connection, which is the essence of the satanic cosmos, also yeah, there won't be such a sacrifice. And in a way, humanity wouldn't be at its current level if there hadn't been people who were very satanic in nature uh, and sacrificed themselves, who gave themselves for the good of humanity. So it's not dark. So let's move then to the next item in this question. Is it necessary for a person to evolve to develop individual consciousness? Well, here we come actually into a story about the nature of the human spirit. Because the spirits which used to incarnate in human bodies were very uh, satanic in essence. So they felt part of the earth, they felt part of the land, uh, they felt that all other living beings were their brothers and their sisters. This was natural to them. And we all heard the stories of Atlantis being destroyed and these Atlanteans needed a place to go to seek refuge and they came to our world. And Atlanteans were not like the Lemurians who lived here before. They are, by their very nature, luciferical beings. So they live and they learn by contrast. Light versus dark, good versus evil, male uh, uh, opposing female. <laughs> and out of the tension of the two, out of, in a way, splitting the atom, um, they derive power because these two powers, which were, which are once, yeah, one and harmonious, if you pull them apart, they want to interact, and this creates a lot of movement, a lot of change, and this can be used. This energy can be harnessed, and this is the essence of the Atlantean teaching: to, in a way, split things apart and then to use the tensions. Um, so yes, it has given us atomic bombs, atomic power. Uh, it has taught us a lot about chemistry and also energetically it works in the same way. Uh, we learn to work with the yin and the yang, the ida and the pingala channels and to combine them to yeah, create or invite even greater cosmic energies like the kundalini power to uh, manifest into our bodies. Uh, so it has given us a lot of technology but also the essence is very much duality that there is a difference between me and the other. And uh, the Atlantean spirits have yeah, been very dominant and are in a way uh, taking over the world, pushing out the, uh, yeah, the spirits who have a more Lemurian nature, who feel less and less at home on this world, which is becoming more and more black and white, or more divided according to the Atlantean principles. So, and of course the Atlanteans, they like their method best, so they think it is better. Uh, the Lemurians don't agree, but well, they're losing, so who cares? Um, but the Atlanteans should also be quite aware that um, they're very likely to yeah, re, uh, 
visit the mistakes of their past because well in the past they utterly destroyed their own uh, ecosystem and therefore life could no longer be sustained by their planet and they had to incarnate here so they sent their spirits to this planet to take over human bodies and um, the same impulse of trying to build technology control everything and split everything apart separate everything uh, and therefore have a greater control over everything to influence everything which they can be which can be influenced this desire is very strong within their spirits and they're repeating it on this world and maybe they have learned maybe they won't destroy this world maybe they will we'll have to see but yeah it is a very newer you could say impulse than the older Lemurian impulse so in that way you can you could say it is progress but I wouldn't say it is necessarily better We also need to look a little bit at the Arimanic impulse. Uh, the Arimanic impulse um, often seems very much the same as the divine impulse. In the divine impulse, everybody and everything has uh, the feeling of the impulses of the divine, which are guiding them. So you know what you're supposed to do. You know your task, your position. You know the will of the universe. And you are inspired and guided by it to carry out, to manifest that part of the universe which is you. And in the Arimanic side, you have your station, your position, your task, uh, which is usually corresponding to your talents, to your form. So in it seems very similar, but it's actually a complete opposite. Because rather than that, in the, like in the divine cosmos, that the consciousness of who you are, what you are, what you're supposed to do is yours, and you use it to understand everything around you, and listen to everything around you, and choose to react to it, you're boxed in you are, in a way, being uh, not so much aware of your surroundings, but you're being, your around surroundings are enforcing themselves upon you. So, for instance, in a divine cosmos, if I would be a very financially successful person, I would feel like, gosh, I have all this money lying around, what to do with it? Oh, yeah, I know, there's some great charities around and oh, this road needs fixing and yeah, the, the garbage service in that part of the town is bad. Let's go and fund that. Let's give my money to, uh, yeah, to improve the world around me. Um, this would be normal for a person in the divine cosmos to use his money where he f feels and realizes he can be useful. Um, if you look at the complete opposite, the Arimanic cosmos, it's basically the person fills out a tax form, the money is taken away from him, and somebody else somewhere who has that function decides what happens to his money. And there is a complete loss of control for that person. They can only control things in their own little square, and some of these squares of positions are higher, some are lower, but the person is by nature very much trapped in laws, regulations, positions, expectations, and there is no freedom uh, in that sense. The freedom is very limited by the laws and regulations. And unfortunately, as our society evolves, also the Arimanic structure of our society evolves, more and more laws, oversight with more and more restraints and less and less being left to the personal inspiration, to the personal desire, to the personal freedom. Um, so, but also within our modern cosmos, as I said, there is a light and a dark side, so it's possible to, pro to progress. So, in answer, do we need spiritual advancement? 
do we need to be self-aware for spiritual advancement? No, not at all. It's not necessary. Uh, what we do need to do is to use our powers in a good way. Um, because this is what creates a higher karma. We are all born with a certain raw talent, and if we do nothing, then our power, our talent is wasted, and it will not be entrusted to us in our next form, in our next incarnation. So we need to be active. We need to do what we can do. And by doing what we can do, uh, powers will say, like, okay, this person is yeah, having an effect on themselves, they're having an effect on the world around them. So this creates motion, this creates change, this creates opportunities for yeah, learning, for evolution. And uh, the more this person is creating these opportunities, the more power and influence will be entrusted to that person to yeah, create more movement, to create more opportunities for the world to change, for that own person also to change. So laziness, you could say, or doubt or fears or inactivity are really the things we need to get rid of. So indeed we should never be sheep who are just mindlessly following the flock. We should be actively choosing, should we follow the flock, should we lead the flock, can we help the flock, can we heal the flock, can we transform the flock that we are a part of. So that's very important to really focus on change. Change is always risk. Some change turns out to have good effects. More often it will turn out to have bad effects. But the bad effects also create learning. And this is the process we're involved in here. A learning process. And by making loads and loads of mistakes, we're learning loads and loads and loads of things. And ultimately, even though we make many mistakes, our karma will improve. While if we do nothing, well, we are, if we are afraid to make mistakes, having creating a bad effect our karma will actually decrease so this is a tricky one to think about because karma is about skill and it is if we do things badly then of course yeah we get a negative grade and powers may be taken away from us but if we do badly but learn from it <laughs> then we are usually given second chances so the desire to change is also what creates karmatic opportunities. If we're willing to do better, if we're willing to try something new, if we're willing to try it in somebody else's way, instead of only on our own way or on our own terms, this very flexibility, this very curiosity is what creates the ability for growth and change in ourselves and in society.